So what's up guys welcome back uh, to another session and today's discussion is on alpha receptor blocking agents it's kind of a mind mapping session and i hope i'll be able to complete this session within five minutes but let's see uh, what is for us as far as alpha receptor blocking agents are concerned and now uh, key point is that uh, specific drugs are discussed in detail um, when we talk about specific conditions like hypertension and so on so here is kind of a summary just to give you an overview on alpha receptor blocking agents uh, agents and nothing to deal with uh, clinical therapeutics as such okay so uh, alpha receptors um, are divided into alpha 1 and alpha 2 we also have subtypes of alpha 1 and alpha 2 uh, anyway um, moving next alpha receptors are located alpha 1 especially uh, at the post junctional sites on the effector organs and alpha 2 are located pre junctionally uh, some of them are also located on organs like um, uh, pancreas and brain and so on anyway these are inhibitory um, receptor and any activation leads to inhibition of neurotransmitter release especially noradrenaline that is what needs to be remember the next thing about alpha receptors is that if you block alpha receptors smooth muscle relaxation occurs across the body and there are two prominent effects that are seen the one uh, bladder consists the urinary bladder consists of a lot of smooth muscles so uh, urine flow becomes uh, easy especially in people suffering from benign prostatic hypertrophy where there is obstruction to the urine flow due to enlargement of the prostate so it is one of the uh, greatest use of alpha blocking agents the next is um, the blood vessels dilate so there is a dip in the blood pressure now this any now this dip in the blood pressure gives rise to reflex tachycardia mm, reflex tachycardia uh, it also occurs due to release of uh, noradrenaline now why it should get released it's because that you are trying to block alpha 2 receptors which are inhibitory so you block those receptors you take out that inhibition so uh, as an indirect phenomena the noradrenaline is going to get released that is going to cause also reflex tachycardia any vasodilatation is going to give, uh, going to uh, uh, cause reduction in blood supply to the kidneys so a lot of renin secretion so there is going to be a lot of sodium and water retention uh, now that's not an issue in normal individuals but in individuals who are uh, having a weak heart that can precipitate uh, congestive cardiac failure. Uh, it also causes contraction of organs of ejac ejaculation, especially in males. So, can give rise to retrograde ejaculation issues, especially uh, in individuals, uh, young individuals. Nasal stuffiness and meiosis of the eyes are also seen with uh, alpha receptor blocking agents as far as uh, the classification is concerned then we have something called as non-selective and selective alpha blocking agents non-selective alpha blocking agents are phentolamine and phenoxybenzamine phentolamine is a short acting one phenoxybenzamine is the one uh, which is orally available phentolamine being a short acting alpha blocker will cause reduction in the blood pressure um, it's a non-selective alpha blocker so is used as diagnostic purposes in case of pheochromocytoma what is pheochromocytoma in short it's the tumor of the adrenal uh, glands the medulla and it secretes a lot of catecholamines in the body which gives rise to a lot of hypertension uh, or rise in the BP in individuals so as a diagnostic measure you give phentolamine if the blood pressure tops to a certain degree uh, it's diagnostic for pheochromocytoma but anyway it's not something that is uh, practiced on a routine basis in uh, clinical practice anyway phenoxybenzamine is a drug which is available which is a non-selective alpha blocker and is basically used in management of a pheochromocytoma whether it can whether it is a tumor which has to be medically managed pheochromocytoma which has to be medically managed uh, during even surgeries uh, because there is a handling of the tumor so there is a lot of uh, catecholamines release so it causes a uh, high blood pressure so you want to control it you can give phenoxybenzamine so it's drug of uh, choice for individuals suffering from uh, pheochromocytoma to manage hypertension as far as selective alpha 1 alpha blockers are concerned then we have prazosine which is alpha 1 blocker Terazosine, which is a long-acting alpha block, alpha one blocker, and then we have very specific 
uh, tamsulosine which is a alpha 1a blocker this receptor 1a is very specific for bladder so it eliminates a lot of vascular side effects related to uh, uh, what i should say uh, alpha blockage so prazosine terazosine and tamsulosine i think we also have doxazosine anyway i can include it uh, but anyway it's just for uh, your information that there would be few more drugs in this test but anyway uh, terazosine Tamsulosin are reserved for bladder and blood uh, benign prostatic hypertrophy since they are to be given at least uh, just once a day. Uh, whereas prazosin can be used for some other purposes also. Anyway, looking at the uses of alpha blockers, then we use them in hypertension as a third line agent, not a first line agent, or in cases of refractory hypertension. Prazosin or related drugs can be used in benign prostatic hypertrophy. Once a day, terazosin or very specific tamsulosin can be used uh, so that it becomes very effective. And now remember that it does not halt the progression of the disease. It just gives rise to symptomatic relief in about one or two weeks of time after starting the treatment. Peripheral vascular diseases in the form of Raynaud's phenomena, which are basically vasoconstructive in nature and are non-obstructive, we can use al alpha blockers with limited success. Pheochromocytoma, as I discussed, non-selective alpha blockers like phenoxybenzamine and for diagnostic purposes, phentolamine can be used. Hypertension crisis. Now that occurs especially if an individual takes a lot of catecholamine or related products and are not degraded or are not eliminated from the body. Especially occurs in individuals taking MAO inhibitors for depression and who take who ingest uh, a lot of uh, cheese which contains a lot of tyramine. Now that's not something which you can see uh, in Asian context. At least I have not seen in my practice in Asian context, but anyway, that seems to be a Western issue. But yes, uh, those individuals who uh, uh, take in a lot of catecholamines can suffer from hypertension. In fact, malignant hypertension kind of a thing, not malignant, I should say. A very high blood pressure is recorded. So you, a person, can, uh, a healthcare professional can use alpha blocker to bring that blood pressure down. It is also seen in clonidine withdrawal. Uh, clonid is a drug which acts on to the alpha 2 receptors so it inhibits uh, NA release so you uh, I should say you, you just uh, in a condition where clonid is not prescribed uh, that inhibition is lost and there is a lot of NA release that occurs so uh, it is one of the drugs that you can use in clonid in withdrawal the last and not the least is shock yes uh, in shock, uh, you can use alpha blockers, uh, but not as a first line agent. And what in shock, what happens is that the periphery gets constricted, blood vessels get constricted, and um, um, vasodilatation due to alpha blockers can help in perfusion of the periphery. It can also uh, shift the fluid from the pulmonary segment to the systemic circulation. It will also bring in a lot of fluid from the extravascular compartment into intravascular compartment. So becomes one of the drugs that can be used as a supportive line of management in cases of shock. As far as side effect of these drugs are concerned and postural hypotension that occurs due to vasodilatation and peripheral pulling of the blood. Postural hypotension gives rise to reflex tachycardia because there is less blood supply reaching the heart. So the heart pumps uh, at a higher rate because always remember in medicine that uh, you have a heart which is joined to the periphery and this is an interdependent system. Anything happens to the periphery, the heart is going to get affected. Anything happens to the heart, the periphery is going to get affected. Periphery comprises of uh, veins, arteries, uh, arterioles, venules, capillaries and the entire blood vascular system of the body. So postural hypotension, tachycardia that leads to palpitations of course. Uh, some of these drugs can cross the blood pain barrier and can cause drowsiness. Uh, now important side effect seen with this drug especially in the first few doses is the first dose effect. Okay, The patient can have a fainting attack because of uh, um, vasodilatation. Uh, which gives rise to a uh, lot of pulling of the blood in the periphery. Now that is exaggerated in the first few doses. To avoid this, 
what you can do is that you can give this drug at bedtime so that's one of the important components and you can start with the lowest dose possible and then escalate over a period of uh, a week to the full dose uh, and you can avoid first dose effect now that's very important when you talk of alpha receptor blockers uh, in addition to that it can also cause impaired ejaculation uh, in fact retrograde ejaculation can occur uh, if a person is taking alpha blocker fluid retention now that all concepts relate to the physiological uh, effects of these drugs which i have discussed here so if that was about the side effect profile of these drugs uh, then we go on to some other blocking agents selective blocking agents alpha 2 blocker that is uahimbin um, I don't know if it is used in therapeutics, at least I haven't used that, uh, but it's said to be a aphrodisiac drug uh, that can give rise to some kind of a sexual pleasure uh, kind of a uh, phenomena. So you can use that, it's said to be and it's in the theory, so I need to mention it. Uh, some other drugs in medicine also have additional alpha blocking action, especially antipsychotic drugs. So especially the side effect profile of these uh, drugs increases due to their alpha blockage. So need to remember a few antipsychotics related to uh, uh, alpha blocking agent. That was all from me as far as summary on alpha blocking agents are concerned. I hope you like this mind map. You can of course add your own notes uh, to expand this um, mind map and create uh, your own. Uh, thank you. Enjoy listening and learning and do subscribe. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye.